The power source is a reactor which uses this element 115 as its fuel. Inside the reactor, element 115 is bombarded with a proton, which plugs into the nucleus of the 115 atom and becomes element 116, which immediately decays and releases or radiates small amounts of antimatter. The antimatter is released in a vacuum into a tuned tube, which keeps it from reacting with the matter that surrounds it. It is then directed towards a gaseous matter target at the end of the tube. The matter and antimatter collide and annihilate, totally converting to energy. The heat from this reaction is converted into electrical energy in a near 100% efficient thermoelectric generator. This is a device that converts heat directly into electrical energy. This particular disc appeared to be in excellent condition and because of its sleek appearance, I nicknamed it the Sport Model. The Sport Model is about 16 feet tall and 40 feet in diameter. The exterior skin of the disc is metal, which is the color of unpolished stainless steel. The sport model sits on its belly when it's not energized. As you can see, the hatch is located on the upper half of the disc with just the bottom portion of the door wrapping around the center lip of the disc. The interior level of the disc is divided into three levels. The lower level is where the three gravity amplifiers and amplifier guides are located. These are the things used to amplify and focus the gravity A wave that we learned about in our science lessons. The reactor is located directly above the three gravity amplifiers on the center level and is in fact centered between them. The reactor is similar to this half scale model. The element 115 is machined into triangles like this and is then inserted into the reactor. This piece of element 115 is the source of the gravity A wave as well as the target that is bombarded with protons to release the antimatter. The center level of this disc also houses the control consoles and seats, both of which were too small and too low to the floor to be functional for adult human beings. The walls of the center level are all divided into archways. At one point in time, when the disc was energized, one of the archways became transparent and you could see the area outside of it just as if the archway was a window. After the panel had been transparent for a while, a form of writing, which was unlike any alphabetic, scientific, or mathematical symbols I've ever seen, began to appear on the transparent archway. I was never given access to the upper level of the disc, so I can't enlighten you as to what the porthole-like areas are, other than I can assure you that they're not portholes. The S4 installation is built into the mountain and the nine hangar doors are angled at about 60 degrees. These doors are covered with a sand textured coating to blend in with the side of the mountain and the desert floor. My ID badge had a white background with one light blue and one dark blue diagonal stripe in the upper left hand corner. At the bottom of the badge there were letters and numbers designating various areas including S4. The hangar was equipped with typical tools and extensive electronic equipment. The gravity amplifiers of the disc can be focused independently and they are pulsed and do not stay on continuously. As you can see, as the output of the gravitational field from the amplifiers becomes more intense, the form of space-time around the disc not only bends upward, but at maximum distortion actually folds over into almost a heart shape around the top of the disc. The program out at Area S4 consisted of three projects, Project Galileo, Project Sidekick, and Project Looking Glass. Project Sidekick dealt with a beam weapon that had a neutron source and was focused by a gravity lens. Project Looking Glass dealt with the physics of seeing back in time. I would randomly be taken into a small room which contained a table, a chair, and 120 or so briefings in blue folders. These briefings contained a wide spectrum of information mostly relating to aliens and alien technology. This technology that you've learned about thus far was brought here by some alien beings from the Zeta Reticuli 1 and 2 star system. These stars are located in the constellation of Reticulum, which can only be seen from the southern hemisphere. Zeta Reticuli is a binary star system, which means it has two stars, and is located approximately 30 light years from Earth. These beings are from Reticulum 4, which is the fourth planet out from Zeta Reticuli 2. A day on Reticulum 4 is 90 Earth hours long. The beings are 3 to 4 feet tall and weigh 25 to 50 pounds. They have grayish skin and large heads with almond-shaped wraparound eyes. They have very slight nose, mouth, and ear positions and are hairless. These beings said that they had been visiting Earth for a long time and presented photographic evidence which they contended was over 10,000 years old. There was an exchange of hardware and information in Central Nevada until 1979, at which time there was a conflict which brought the program to an abrupt halt. The beings left but we're to return at a 1623 date, and I don't know what that date is. These beings conveyed information about the capability of affecting the human brain to anesthetize the human body. These beings said that man was the product of externally corrected evolution. 
They said that man, as a species, had been genetically altered 65 times. They refer to humans as containers, yet I don't know what we're containers of.